Hi, I'm Denby Dung. Here's what's coming up in the next half hour. We'll learn what it takes to bring 10 dogs on a doggy adventure. Then we'll witness how one dog overcomes his fear of water. Also, help Lucy get back home by learning the facts from Alpha Dog. Plus, we'll be coming to you from Aloha Kia, and we're going to tell you how you can adopt this puppy. Is your yacht a minefield? Are the flies driving you crazy? Hi, I'm Allie the Pooh Princess, and I'm cleaning the world of poop one yacht at a time. To have Allie clean your yard, contact her at gotpoo.biz or 497-9273. What's in your backyard? Aloha and Merry Christmas. I'm Denby Dung. Welcome to the Pet Hui. Today we come to you from the Aloha Kia store in Windward Mall. And Aloha Kia is a huge supporter of no-kill animal shelters such as the Oahu SPCA. And I have this adorable puppy available for adoption. He doesn't have a name yet, so it's up to you. You can name him Dasher. Dancer, Prancer, or Rudolph, it's up to you. If you'd like to adopt him or a puppy like him, contact the Oahu SPCA on their Facebook page. Now let's catch up with Pet Detective Alpha Dog and help Lucy find her way back home. Hey gang, Pet Detective Alpha Dog here. My mission is to reunite pets with their families. Today we're in Mo'ili Ili between the Fern and McCulley Street area. And we're looking for two and a half year old Lucy, a little chihuahua. So let's go inside and find some information on Lucy. Sherry, Pet Detective Alpha Dog here. I came to get some information on Lucy. After speaking with Sherry, this is what I found out. We're looking for two and a half year old female chihuahua named Lucy. She's white in color with black spots and tan eyebrows. Now she weighs approximately three pounds and she was last seen wearing a pink collar. Now Lucy's a therapy dog, so she is very friendly, and gang, there is a reward for her safe return. It was Friday, November 11th, approximately one o'clock in the afternoon, when Sherry let Lucy out into this fenced area of their house. Now when she came back an hour later to check on Lucy, she found that the gate was open, and that's when she found out that Lucy went missing. Not only is Lucy a loving member of Sherry's family, she has a bigger purpose. She's a therapy dog to the foster children that Sherry cares for. We really miss Lucy. She's more than just a dog in our, in our life. She's a therapy dog for my foster kids, and it's really something when you have a dog with you 24-7 to go to not having her at all. She, as soon as we walk in the room, she jumps up on her legs, wants to be picked up and carried constantly. I really want to thank those of you that have really helped us by posting on Facebook and if maybe more of you can, my ad is on Craigslist and share with your friends so people can see her face. She's real obvious with her white stripe down her forehead. My phone number, you can call me directly at 782-7332. My number is also on the Craigslist posting. She has postings at the Humane Society and they have my number. We're offering a reward. Um, or if you really have fallen so in love with her and you want a chihuahua, I'll buy you a chihuahua. I just really need our Lucy back. She's just a missing part, not only of our family, but a part of our hearts, and we're just really devastated. Once again, gang, here are the facts. We're looking for two and a half year old female chihuahua named Lucy. She's white in color with black spots and tan eyebrows. She weighs approximately three pounds. And when last seen, she was wearing a pink collar. Now, Lucy is a therapy dog, so she is very, very friendly. And gang, there is a reward for her safe return. Let's get Lucy back home and make it a happier holiday for the families. Until next time, this is Pet Detective Alpha Dog saying, leash them or lose them. The Oahu SPCA gives stray, abandoned, and abused animals food, shelter, medical care, and love. We house 150 animals a day and are committed to a no-kill philosophy. If you're looking for a pet, adopt one from Oahu SPCA. Help us with our life-saving work. Please make a donation at oahuspca.org. Call 
1519 Oahu SPCA. Attention Hawaii. Log on to AlohaKia.com to see amazing savings on all Kia cars at Aloha Kia's Black Friday Internet Sales Event. You get to see special online internet prices and savings before you come to see us. It's Aloha Kia's Black Friday Internet Sales Event going on all month long. Log on to AlohaKia.com. 2016 Kia Rio. Buy now at 14970. 2016 Kia Soul. Buy now at 14970 or 88 a month. 2016 Kia Forte. Buy now at 16670. Drive a 2016 Kia Optima for 98 a month. AlohaKia.com. See ya in a Kia. Courteous, knowledgeable staff and a pet-friendly atmosphere make the Pet Holly Hawaii's neighborhood pet store. Locally owned and operated in the Melilani Shopping Center, the Pet Holly offers thousands of pet products and dozens of hand-raised pets from our family to yours. From finches to green-wing macaws, from guinea pigs to large breed puppies, our store is home to pet lovers of all ages. Open Monday through Saturday 10 to 8 and Sunday 10 to 6. Find us on Facebook and online at thepetholly.com. Welcome back to The Pet Hui. I'm Denby Dung here at Aloha Kia, a huge supporter of animal shelters. And this adorable puppy is a boxer hound mix, and he's around eight weeks old. If you'd like to give him a home for the holidays, contact the Oahu SPCA on their Facebook page and adopt him. Now here's our next story. Aloha, my name is Miss Michael McKenna and I have Happy Day Doggy Excursions. And I take dogs for walks and poop them out and bring them back home to you. So come along and I'll show you how it works. Puppy sit, puppy sit. Puppy's come. When you go and you pick up a dog and they see you and they, almost, it's, almost. it's all love. <laughs> so when I started Happy Day Doggy Excursions, I had been in the automotive industry for 30 years. One of the funnest things is um, picking up the dogs and taking them on excursions and places that their humans don't take them. My friend Michael Hector, he's the dog guy. I said, dude, I love what you do. This is amazing. You go and you take the dogs and you go take them for walks okay. and you go places and do things. Sign me up. So next we're going to go pick up Riley and he's a black lab mix. He's a rescue dog. He came from the Hawaiian Humane Society. Epo, you want to come? Wow. Sometimes Riley doesn't want to get in the car. And he really has a lot of fun once he gets in the car and we go and do our stuff. But he doesn't want to leave his mom and his, his other pack mate. And he gives me this look. And then I give him back the other look. Please. And so we're like talking to each other. Michael Hector would say, you need to be strong. You're the alpha. But a lot of times you can get more flies with sugar than you can with vinegar. Since I take the dogs in public places, I need to make sure that I follow the rules. We have leashes. Now, when you get to a nice, safe, comfortable place that you know that they're not gonna run off or that it's enclosed and you're confident and you trust your pack to stay together, that's when the magic happens. Hi, guys. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six and three more to go. A lot of the dogs have um, had behavioral problems that have been fixed through good exercise and, and attention during the day. So it's a win-win situation for everybody. I feel very confident in my job and that makes me a better person. What we do is take them all out. I just ask them to come out one at a time. It creates a little order. Lexi, come. Hilo. Come. Good jump, puppy. Ellie Mae. OK. Puppies, come. Half the fun of going out is smelling everything. Because you're in a new place, you smell things. Some of our humans have pools. Half the fun. Going into everybody's yard means that we can go in their pool too. Puppy come. Up. The energy that the dog has, you can feel the human's energy. <laughs> Crap me up. Okay, high 10. Yes. 
So, I mean, that's always intrigued Thank me you. as a very interesting part of the canine society. You know, I'm a dog walker. I just walk dogs and we have fun and I love all of them, you know, and I let them be Puppies dogs wait. and they play and they wait, run. Puppies. Ah. Good up, puppies. Didn't our mom tell us not to run around the pool? Friday's come along and I've spent three days with these guys. And then I have two days without them. And I'm, I actually get really sad. Like Hachi, he won't leave me alone. And he knows he's going home and he does this. <laughs> he has to touch me, you know? And you just fall in love with this. So we just go, we walk around, we let one go off one at a time. So the reason why I leave the dog's leashes on, they're easier to catch. You know, I just step on the leash and say, stay. So in a way, it's safe for them and it's comfortable for me. And it's a little bit of training because they get to learn what stay means. Stop. Hi, Kilo. Thank you. So this park is utilized by a lot of um, dog owners. As you can see, it's dog friendly. It's one of those parks that say no animals allowed. But as I mentioned before, at the city town hall meeting, when I asked Ikaika Anderson, you know, where do we go? What do we do? Because, you know, dogs need to run and be free and play. And they go, just be mindful. Pick up your poop, do a little extra, clean the, you know, trash, you know, make it worth somebody's while. Yes, this happens. When we run around and we go around, we stay in a pack, we work on being in pack mode. And I learned that from Michael Hector. My goal is that after a day with me, your dog's gonna be pooped and they're gonna be tired. To get them tired, we run around and we go to different parks. We, we don't just go to one or two parks, we, we hit three or four different places. So it's in and out of the car, it's out in the park, sometimes we go to the beach. I always try and make sure there's some water in each of our excursions. Each park has its own set of smells because there are other dog walkers that go and take their dogs. There's uh, other kids who go and bring their kids, their dogs after work. So that's a day in the life of Happy Day Doggy Excursions. So I hope you had a great time. Thanks for watching. The folks at VCA Kaneohe Animal Hospital know how important your pets are. With that in mind, we will be extending our hours for emergencies until 10 p.m. Our caring staff is available for surgery seven days a week. Come see any one of our qualified veterinarians, including our newest team member, Dr. Marin Nakasone. We are always looking to extend our family and are taking new client referrals for board-certified internal medicine at our Pearl City location. Living in Hawaii, you need the best, and WeatherTech floor mats from Wetokoli are the perfect choice. When those unfortunate accidents happen and your plate lunch goes to the floor, WeatherTech mats will be there to protect and they're easy to clean. Deep channels trap water, dirt, mud, and sand, and they're available for hundreds of makes and models, so no matter what you drive, you'll find the perfect fit. WeatherTech floor mats. Find them at Wetokoli on Dillingham, just Eva of Kalihi Street. Don't miss the Wet Ocoli Christmas Sale, November 15th through December 24th, by Wet Ocoli. Hi, I'm Denby Dung. Welcome back to our show. We're here at Aloha Kia, a huge supporter of the Oahu SPCA, and I have a puppy here available for adoption. Some fun facts that you need to know. He loves long walks on the beach. 
loves to be cuddled and held, has a thing for shoelaces, and will melt in your arms. And I promise you, your heart will melt too. If you're interested in adopting him, contact the Oahu SPCA on their Facebook page. And remember, when you support Aloha Kia, you support Hawaii's homeless pets. Now here's our next story. So this is, uh, this is my German Shepherd, Ava. She's about uh, five years old. And uh, she's not too friendly with the water. I love the water. Water for me is a form of therapy. Uh, I love being out on it. And I couldn't think of anything else better than to have uh, my dog out there with me so we can both enjoy it. The issue that I have is that every time I try to get even to the water, she's, uh, she's scared. And I can't break that. So uh, I need some help because I'd really like to get her up on my paddleboard. So I've tried to get Ava in the water about 15, 20 times. And, uh, you know, one day you, you'll think that she'll do it, and she, she sees the water, and next thing you know, she runs away. And then she's chomping at the water because she wants to bite it, because she's a dog and she likes to play. And it, you know, it just gets frustrating after a while, because you're just like, why won't you play in the water? The water doesn't hurt, you know? But uh, not being a trainer, it, 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 you don't know how to introduce a dog to water. At least I do. So it, it's been very frustrating. There's been many beautiful days uh, that we could just go up on a, on a glassy water up in uh, Haleiwa, you know, and enjoy the uh, enjoy the day. Uh, but it hasn't worked out, and so you know, you just we just we go home, we we try it another day, and uh, you know, and we, we try hard, <laughs> but uh, we get the same result, you know. So we go home a little disappointed. So after about two years of uh, trying to get Ava into the water, I, I've just reached the point where I'm not going to be able to do it anymore. So. I have a friend of mine who recommended uh, Off-Leash Canine, Erica McCrell. Uh, she's worked with German Shepherds her whole military career and he's worked with her. So she's got her work cut out for her. I, it's not that I doubt her, uh, but I've been trying for two years, so I don't know, uh, hopefully she can get this to work. So I just left Craig. Um, this is Ava, his German Shepherd. Uh, he was telling me about how he loves to go out on the water, he paddle boards a lot, and loves to take his dog with him, but he can't enjoy doing what he wants to do, which is paddle boarding, with her with him. So it's kind of a hit and go. Um, so I just brought her out to the beach here. I, I chose a beach that doesn't have a whole lot of waves. Um, I just want to give an assessment on her and see, you know, how much back is behind it, how scared she really is. Uh, sometimes, you know, a scared could be, oh, they just don't want to get in it, and then they dive in and they have a lot of fun versus it could be she is absolutely terrified and it is a huge fight and struggle. Oh, she definitely has got some issues. Uh, I've, got, I've got a lot of work cut out for me. Uh, so she couldn't get out of that water fast enough. She's really happy to be out of it and on the sand now. Uh, so we got a lot of work to do and we're gonna have a lot of fun fixing that problem real quick. Load. Good girl. So by the end of it, what I want to be able to capture is a picture of Craig taking off on his paddleboard with Ava on the front of it, no issues. Come on. All right, so first off, uh, anytime you're going to teach a dog something new, you want to make sure that it's going to be Come on. as easy for them and as less stressful for them as possible. So I chose the canal here. Good job. Down. I had her sit, I had her lay down to just get adjusted and accustomed to feeling the water at different parts of her body. Um, I mean, basically just getting her used to it so that it's not a scary thing, she can actually enjoy it. Uh, one of the biggest reasons that it's gonna advance quickly for her is I don't have to start from the bottom with her. Uh, she's already got her basic foundation, come, sit, down, place, um, and she's very proficient with them, so her dad's done a lot of really good work with her so far as far as building that foundation, which has set me and her up for success and achieving this new task of getting her to swim and paddleboard. Well, my work is done here. Come on. So the next step is, Come. now that I've got her used to this calm, shallow water, uh, starting the approach to working with her with the smaller waves, getting into that deeper water. I think that once she gets past that wave break, she's going to be just fine. I'm going to start with just calling her. Uh, she didn't have any problem off leash whenever we were with no waves in the shallow water, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a shot here. Um, it didn't really work out. I had to put her on the leash. Uh, she didn't want to come out to me once we did a little bit of leash work and coaxed her in, being able to control her and, and held her close. Uh, she basically started to trust me and believes I wasn't gonna let anything happen to her. Uh, once she starts to calm down some and she's not doing that frantic paddling and kicking, um, then I'll go ahead and hold on to her. And that's where you see me holding her and just positively praising her, telling her how good she's doing and uh, being calming for her. 
And then whenever she relaxes enough, then I'm gonna let her go, which is what she wants. And then she can free to swim around or she can go ahead and go back to the bank, which she went back to the bank a couple of times and then she chose to go for a swim a couple of times, so. So Ava and I are here at the beach today. We're gonna to meet Erica. Uh, she says that she's got something to show me. I'm gonna be surprised and, and very happy with it. And uh, Not that I doubt her, but uh, I'm hoping that maybe she can come through and we can get Ava on a paddleboard and we'll have a good time. I was ecstatic when I saw Ava break over the waves and uh, come out to Erica and I. It was. Uh, I know Ava, and I know at that point in time when she uh, she had no more fear of those waves, that it was going to be good, and we'll have a lot of good times from here on out. So Erica was uh, teaching me that you know dogs are just uh, mostly scared. It's not that they don't like things, but they're scared, and you have to uh, build their confidence incrementally, a uh, little bit at a time. You know, shallow water, then uh, uh, calm water, and then go to a little bit deeper water, then a little bit choppier, and then after that, they should be good to go. So we brought the paddleboard out, and uh, I really didn't know what to expect, but uh, Ava jumped right on, and she was comfortable. We pushed her around a little bit, and she didn't jump off, and I was like, okay, so we're gonna go for it. And uh, we went a little bit deeper, got on the uh, paddleboard, and started paddling, and it was great. Uh, we hit one wave, and, and uh, the board kind of tipped a little bit, but she just, uh, she hunkered down, didn't decide to jump off, and uh, so I knew at that point in time that we were good to go. Super exciting because I know now that every weekend Ava and I will be on the paddle board, we'll be out on the water, uh, we'll have a good time, and uh, we'll be able to bond a little bit more. So, uh, another satisfied dog and owner. They say the older you get, the wiser. I say the newer you look, the smarter. The Mini has grown up. Introducing the newest Mini, the hardtop four-door. Double the doors and classy, sophisticated, intelligent, and very cool. Or check out the Countryman, Mini's other four-door. Plus the true original, the Mini hardtop two-door. All of this, plus Mini's boot to bonnet, no cost, three year, 36,000 mile maintenance. Mini of Hawaii, all grown up. lodging, socialization, or just a nail trip. Tales of Hawaii is here for you. Give us a call at 676-9663. Your dog is our best friend at Tales of Hawaii. If your cat is constantly causing trouble, always on the prowl, and never comes when called, you need a can of Regionals cat food. Biologically appropriate food that contains fresh meat, poultry, fish, and game that's rich in protein, low in carbs, and entirely grain-free for a balanced diet. How will your cat act? Well, they'll still cause trouble and they'll never come when called, but you can be sure they're healthy and enjoying the best food available. A can of Regionals, exceptional food for your cat. Hi, I'm Denby Dung, and this is Shiloh Dung. Welcome back to the Pet Hui. I met Shiloh and her siblings a few years ago on a taping of the Pet Hui. We decided to adopt Shiloh and her brother Gage, and they have brought so much happiness and joy into our lives ever since. So I encourage you to do the same, adopt, save a life, and in turn, you will get unconditional love. <laughs> right? <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> And today it's all about the Toy Fox Terrier. Today we're with Jeff Wong and we've got a friend here. Who's this, Jeff? This is Samantha. She's a Toy Fox Terrier and she's seven and a half years old. How many Toy Fox Terriers do you have? At present I have her as, and I have the three puppies who are nine days old. Nine days old. Well, we'll have to take a look at those in a few minutes. All right. The Toy Fox Terrier is a descendant of the Fox Terrier, but is now considered a separate breed. 
They were developed in America by crossing smooth fox terriers with toy breeds, including miniature pinchers, Italian greyhounds, chihuahuas, and Manchester terriers. The result is a dog that's a hunter like a terrier, but with a milder disposition from the other breeds. The Toy Fox Terrier was first developed in the 1930s and recognized by the AKC in 2003. In addition to being very intelligent, they're great family pets and are outgoing, friendly, and fiercely loyal to their families. They're good living in apartments, but love to be outdoors and like to hunt and play. They're good with children, although with any toy breed, it's best not to introduce them to very young children. Because they are so fiercely loyal to their family, the Toy Fox Terrier is often called a big dog in a little package and has an ego that will dominate almost every situation. Their intelligence, though, also makes them excel at other duties. Toy Fox Terriers are highly animated, comical, entertaining, and playful their whole life. If trained right, they don't bark much. They're perfect for Hawaii because they don't do well in cold weather. Although they love to hunt and play, they're also comfortable just relaxing. Toy Fox Terriers come in a number of colors. Tricolor, which has a black head with tan markings over a white coat. The white, chocolate, and tan varieties usually have a chocolate-colored head and the body is over 50% with or without spots. White and blacks are marked the same as the white and tans. As for health issues, the Toy Fox Terrier has some, but overall is considered a very healthy breed. Problems that may arise include periodontal disease, knee problems, and allergic reactions to some foods. And we promised you we'd take a look at Sammy's puppies. Let's do that now. Jeff, their eyes are still closed. Uh, when do they open? Another week and a half. The pups will grow to a height of eight and a half to 11 and a half inches tall. When these guys are full grown, they'll weigh between three and a half to nine pounds. Their life expectancy is about 15 years. If you're interested in getting a Toy Fox Terrier, find a reputable breeder, do your homework, and make sure it's the right choice for you. Jeff, it sounds like Mom really wants these puppies uh, back. She sure does. <laughs> Maybe we ought to get them back to her. All right. And now you know all about the Toy Fox Terrier. There's a wonderful special event happening on December 11th called A Winter Wonder Furland, presented by Zane Style House, owned by Liana Wright, benefiting the Fur Angel Foundation. This Give Back event will be at the beautiful Hokulani rooftop in Waikiki on December 11th from 5 to 9 p.m. and will include entertainment, fashion shows, a wine bar, food, door prizes, and adoptable dogs from the Fur Angel Foundation. Purchase your tickets today at eventbrite.com. I look forward to seeing all of you at this holiday red carpet celebration on December 11th.